coming to you from Orange County, California. This is the Jug Life Podcast with Max Ada and Chad Wesley Smith. Hey everybody, Chad Wesley Smith here bringing you another episode of the Jug Life Podcast. Joined as always by the notorious MAX, Max Montana. How you doing, buddy? Good. How you guys doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. And our guest today, fresh off an IPF World Championship, world record holder, mm-hmm. Marissa Enda. Don't I get a special name? Uh, the Mighty Mamacita. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. Good. So Marissa and I just got back from Belarus, a lovely vacation spot, uh, where she competed in uh, and won the 52 kilo class championship at, at IPF Worlds in the most competitive of all the female weight classes. Uh, they had four girls with over a 500 Wilkes. Uh, the most any other weight class, women's weight class had was three and then it was two, one, or zero in a couple of the classes. Um, so we're uh, pretty pretty excited about that. It was a pretty stressful day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, definitely, it, definitely was, it definitely was a very stressful day. Um, so for the listeners, viewers not familiar with you, yeah. can you talk about your background and how you got into lifting? And Yeah, so um, I started out originally as a child as a gymnast. I was a gymnast for all the way through high school. and um, This is after your <clears throat> competitive sheep riding career. Yes, that is not a thing in Spain. <laughs> sheep riding? Sheep riding. That's a thing. Like Champion sheep, I was, I, sheep rider. No, like, I, have you ever gone to, like... When they have like cowboy festivals and stuff, they have like sheep riding, and you can ride on the sheep. Cowboy festivals. That's just like a Tuesday well, I mean, in Montana. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you should know. We could probably have a battle. Uh, but, so they just ride sheep. Yeah, the little kids. Obviously, it's not adults. But then, like, you sit on little kids and women so, like, up to fifty-six yeah. kilos. Yes, and then like if you fall off, obviously you lose. Yeah, they were uh, falsi- falsifying versus. She's the best junior uh, <laughs> sheep rider in all of Spain. Yes, I am. Is there doping control in sheep riding? Or? Well, no, I think it's just free for all. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, uh, yes, gym, <laughs> gymnastics. <laughs> Sorry to derail you. Uh, gymnastics. Yes, and then when I realized, like, I obviously I'm not going to make the Olympics because I'm old, because gymna- gymnasts have, like, a shelf life. Um, I needed something to do. I tried track. Fucking hated it. And then from there, I just stumbled into a gym and started lifting weights. So um, then competed in bodybuilding for a little bit. How old were you when you, when you got the gym? 17. Okay. Yeah. So that was eight years ago? Yeah, it was about eight years ago. Okay. I actually made my way to a step class, and this was still in the 90s, so the yeah. girls were still wearing the leotard over the bike shorts. Nice. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then I realized very quickly I'm in the wrong fucking place. What yeah. color leg warmers did you have on? I did not wear leg warmers then, but I wear them now. They're, they're back in style. Don't yeah, they are. They are. Head, Thank you. What about a headband? I did not have a headband. I, you, gonna, do you see? You, you I think, don't look good in headbands. Do you think Max can corroborate that something is back in style? That's true. Yeah, Gram- maybe. Grandpa shoes and Umbro shorts <laughs> over here? <laughs> yep. Well, Max isn't wearing pants right now, so. That's true. <laughs> or is he? You'll never know. <laughs> I'll never know. Um, Tune in next week to find yeah. out. So with the, the gymnastics background, I... One of my favorite stories is you, you started you had lifted weights a little bit when you were very young, right? Yes, yeah. In like a garage gym. Yeah, my situation. brother had like you know the little bench set up with the little weights, like the weights that have cement in them and the gray covering. If you're yeah. familiar with those, I know those. Yeah, yeah so he would always have his friends over, and then he would make bets, like, "Oh, I bet my sister can bench this." No, he can't. And he would collect all the money, and of course, I would then bench the weight. Did so. you get a cut of that? You know, come to think of it, I don't think I got my fair share, so wow. I should. And I'm going back. You got interest. You could charge him on that. I now, should charge I him interest. He does make enough to pay me. So. Do Do you remember what you benched at? Like what age um, then? Ninety five was my best, and I was probably like 13, 14 years old. And you weighed what, like? Um, probably pounds like, then? No, probably like seventy five. I when I graduated high school, you I benched, was under a hundred. I was like ninety pounds. You benched ninety five pounds, weighing seventy five at thirteen. Yep. Okay, so well, you're okay. You're all right at benching, I guess. <laughs> that, that's on the level of the Ed Cohen first time deadlifting did 450. Yeah. Well, I mean, in yeah. all fairness, though, so in gymnastics, it's all upper body movement. Yeah. So, like, you you know, that definitely really helped me be a good bencher, be good with, like, upper body movement. So, 
So at about seven, 17 years old, though, you start lifting seriously. Yeah. And what, mm -hmm. what was that training like? Well, I was the ultimate creeper. There was this girl in there, and she had a really, really good physique, and I just started following her around and started just doing what she was doing. And then um, from there, I... People just do that digitally. Well, now, now they do that digitally, yeah. yeah. But back in the day, you just had it like, you had oh, to do your, she's over there. You had to do your stalking in yeah, person. Yeah, stalking in person, and then way. I would like then do what she was doing. <laughs> and luckily, for my gymnastics background, I had always pretty good form, an idea of how like movement should feel and stuff. And then one of the guy trainers like, oh, you should compete in bodybuilding, and you know, it's when you get the Flex magazine and you just start learning yeah. how to do shit. Who was your, your favorite bodybuilder? Kevin Lavroni. What about my for favorite. female bodybuilders? Oh, uh, Sharon Bruno, because I thought she was like the ultimate with like muscularity as well as aesthetics and remaining like feminine looking. I saw Kev Kevin Lavroni just mm. posted some like big bench video maybe. Yeah, two he's or three trying weeks to make ago, a right? comeback, so we'll see how that goes for him. He, he came back to the last Olympia, didn't do well because he had knee problems and his legs weren't very developed but he's a pretty strong guy how old is he now older than me i don't know like uh, 48 maybe yeah. it's a lot older than you yeah, yeah. yeah. and impressive. i love sharon bruno too because everyone thought i kind of looked like a mini sharon bruno uh, so i'd always like try to play that up with your curly hair that you had back then yeah well we'll make sure that shorty gets those pictures to yeah. include. yes <laughs> yeah so from 17 mm -hmm. until about 35 yep right so for those unaware, I was joking about the eight years thing that you're coming up on your on your 16th, 25th birthday. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I will be 41 in in July, so a few weeks. Yeah, uh, so about 35 years old is when you found powerlifting, right? Yeah. So basically, what had happened is I had competed in bodybuilding, and then um, really just didn't like the direction it was going. It was a lot of, a lot of the women were just looking way manly, doing a lot of drugs. Um, I needed to finish college, but I was still training bodybuilding style. Um, and then that's when they started introducing physique, like the other divisions. And I thought, okay, well, that's the route. It's a little bit, you know, kind of how I look. So did a, a, a physique competition, still hated, like, the diet aspect of it and was looking for something else to do. And I saw a flyer for a powerlifting meet and just decided to do it. Had no idea, like, what to expect. So what, what was that first meet like when you, when you showed up? I mean, some of it I know. But... Yeah, like, well, what, I was still a training, like, bodybuilding style. So I was still like, I think I took like a two week taper because I was super heavyweight. Uh -huh. And because I had no idea, I figured, okay, like with bodybuilding, you don't want to like, you know, come in like too full or whatever. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to like taper for two weeks. I still had my old like, you know, Cardillo belt, which yeah. was, didn't pass. Um, actually, it was had a, U, a USAPL mm -hmm. meet, yeah? Yeah, it was a USAPL meet. So when they were like measuring my belt, they're like, this doesn't pass. It was like all thick in the back and then like right. tapered to the front. So I actually had to take a razor blade in the back and cut the back of the belt. I had no idea you had to bench, you had to pause the bench or anything like that. So, you know, but I, I mean, I actually set a lot of state records. So you just, you <laughs> just found a flyer uh -huh. and then went to the meet and yes, did it. And did it. And you didn't, no, I didn't like. Didn't really think about it. Just kind of went yeah. and tried. I think that's people's problem now. They like look on Instagram like, oh my God, I need to be yeah. this good before I do this. And like, I just, like, I was wearing like, I was like, okay, throw on some Chuck Taylors and, you know, just do it. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of the same for my my first meet. I'd never been to a powerlifting meet. Uh, yeah, I'd seen videos of, but of all multiply type of stuff. I just kind of showed up and watched what the other people did. And, and look how fabulous we are. <laughs> yeah, well, had my Nike freeze yeah. on. Everyone making fun of my shoes. Yeah, I think that's the best way to learn. You just go in zero yeah. expectation, yeah. have fun, um, decide if it's something that you're going to enjoy. And I, I really liked it. And you know, just. And do you do you remember your your numbers from that first meet? Um, in pounds, I believe I I want to say I squatted like two two oh five maybe, benched one thirty six, and deadlifted three twenty something. And that was in two thousand eleven. Yeah. Were you still lifting as a fifty two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've always only been a fifty two. Yeah. So coming in two thousand eleven, you got five years. Coming up on six years of, of uh, powerlifting experience now. Mm -hmm. uh, just finished your third world championship, and yeah. and just so people can get perspective on the on the numbers with that, you went from two hundred five squat to now you squatted three thirty. Yes. From what'd you say bench at the first one? One thirty six. One thirty six bench at the first one, just bench two hundred nine. So you're, you're ben benching your old squat, yeah. your first squat. Mm -hmm. Your bench only went from 95 to 136 in, like, 30 years? Oh, no, because <laughs> I didn't know you had to pause. I wasn't training, like, uh, a paused position. So, I mean, prior to that, I was benching, like, 160-something, but touch and go. And then, like, the whole pause thing really throws some shit off. Yeah. 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 At least I had enough 
intelligence to realize, like, in the warm-up room, they're like, you have to pause. I'm like, oh, fuck, I better, like, adjust some shit. Yeah. You know? That's f- And deadlift from 320, 325 yeah. up mm-hmm. to now 413. So make what? sure, yeah, even oh. though the, the 13-year-old bench pressing number was pretty phenomenal, like, for people watching, you know, it wasn't just break all the world records the, the first yeah. day. Yeah, it's no, been a not ton at all. Of progress. Yeah. Where'd that progress come from? <laughs> we'll, we'll, get to, we'll get to the the way that you train in a little bit. Yeah. So before we get to kind of this recap of uh, world championships, mm. let's take a quick break for a strength history minute. What you just witnessed is what I consider to be the most impressive display of reactive elastic power ever, particularly when you consider that the man performing it, Werner Gunther, four-time world champion in the shot put, was about six foot seven inches tall and weighed 300 pounds. Gunther's power and athleticism may only be matched by the glory of his mullet and mustache. From juggling shot puts to a 75-foot overhead backwards throw, a truly amazing feat for those familiar with the test, Gunther was an all-around phenom. He also added a stint on the Swiss bobsled team, and for anyone who's seen Cool Runnings, you know that the Swiss are awesome at bobsled. His training is also very well documented in a video series here on YouTube, and though it's all in French, you can still glean a lot of great understanding about the ideas of special strength training from it. Hopefully you enjoyed that strength history minute. Um, so we've talked about Marissa's, how she, her training background, how she got into powerlifting, um, and going from that, that first day, you know, having a cutter belt with a with a razor and and not knowing that benches were paused to five years later, IPF world champion, most competitive class, most prestigious title. Uh, let's take a, a look back at last week and you know, just tell us about your, your experience in Belarus at world championships. Well, let's just go through like the whole airport fiascos. <laughs> I used to hate LAX, but after going through Frankfurt and the Minx airport, LAX is a friggin' oasis. It is. Yeah. Like Frankfurt the, Frankfurt Airport is had so no, had no restaurants. I mean, this may come <laughs> as a surprise to some of you watching, but I need to eat. <laughs> there was only like there was like six restaurants in this enormous. And you can't get to them because Af- you see them through the window, and they're like, "Oh, you can't go down there." So it's like a big yeah. tease. Or you have to go through like three security checkpoints yes. to get there. That's so bizarre. Awful. And the signs were like misleading yeah. us. They're like, "Go to." Yeah, one of the signs is like, have a three plus hour layover, go to this terminal t- for restaurants and shopping. And we get there and it's like a McDonald's and a Starbucks. No, there was no Starbucks. Was there a Starbucks? Yeah, there was a Starbucks. Oh, fuck, why didn't I go there? <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was. So that part of it, traveling is just always awful. Like, I think, like, I try not to let any of that stuff get in my head. I don't do the calculations like, oh, when I compete at this time, it's going to be 2 a.m. Where, yeah. where I live. I just just kind of go with the flow and. We're really good about like. I did those calculations. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. oh, I don't do but those, but it's too much. It's too much math. Brains, brawn. Yeah. Mm, yes. Looks. Yes. Smarts. <laughs> so wild, wild card. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wild card. <laughs> was it like when you get to Minsk? And it's like sunny and beautiful, right? Yeah. It was. The Friendly, weather was nice. Folks, we actually tropical, got there. It tropical. was like three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. It was really late. Um, we stayed at a very nice Marriott, though, so it I was. really can't complain. The Marriott was the oasis. Yes. Was the venue in the hotel? No, the different? venue was um, at the, the Sports Palace, so it was about 10 minutes away. Oh, cool. Yeah. It was not very palatial. No, it was not. <laughs> the, name, the name was misleading. It was, not, it was not very palatial. But, uh, so get, get into the day, the day of the meet. You know, we we kind of struggled with being able to predict your weight, so we, yeah. we ended up arriving at the hotel at two two thirty in the morning, on Tuesday morning, and you were going to compete Wednesday afternoon. Yeah. The one p.m. weigh-in. And you know, for anyone who's traveled on twenty hours worth of of travel, uh, you know, tend to to retain quite a bit of water with that. And yeah, you know, I've competed in Australia multiple times, but retaining water for me doesn't doesn't matter. I'm always retaining retaining water. Because you're a camel. <laughs> and, <laughs> But so the I, I didn't have any good grasp on, like okay she's probably retaining this much water and it's going to take this long to go away. Yeah. So when we went to check your check uh, Marissa's weight on Tuesday afternoon, we were fifty two two. Yeah. Or something there, and 
I almost think it, it makes it tougher when we're, we're talking about this because you're kind of always 112 to 115 and a half. Yeah. Like every morning you're about, about that weight. I almost think it makes it tougher to almost always be right there than knowing like, all right, I've got to cut yeah. two kilos yeah. because. Yeah, and there's also just that little bit of fear. Okay, well, if I have this meal, is that going to put me yeah. too far over and then having to then stress about getting back mm-hmm. under so. Yeah, so it was just hard to, hard to predict, you know, how long is, is this water retention from the travel going to take to come off? Is this hotel food too salty or whatever? But uh, so she ended up weighing in 50.90 kilos, uh, a lighter than we'd like to weigh in, but, you know, not too bad. So after weigh-ins, let's get to get to warm-ups. How are you feeling in the back room? I'm feeling like shit. I've, I was trying to drink as much water and everything, um, but it's like, as I was eating and drinking, the food was just getting stuck, like right here. I think I even told you, like, I feel like I'm going to throw up. Like, I felt like the food was just going to come back up. And I always have a little bit of nerves, and it's hard for me to, like, eat, eat. But it's never felt like I was going to throw up. So, um, I don't know. What did we do? We just, you just told me just to walk around and yeah. try to, yeah. like, you know, just get through it. So, squats felt good. I mean, but I still felt like everything was just sitting right here. Well, and to, to that point, two things mm-hmm. to that point. One, I think that's something that people who compete in 24-hour weigh-ins discount, even if you don't cut weight. I, let's say you walk around 114, 115, or whatever, and compete as a, as a 52 or 114. Being able to weigh in 24 hours before and eat what you yeah. want for dinner and eat yeah. what you want yeah. the morning of is such an advantage over, even if you're not put, trying to put on weight with that, it, but it's still such an advantage, just the comfort of it, the the lack of mental stress from it and then for people who are recomping to some degree 24 hour away and two hour away and you know, a big mistake that people make is, is they just sit there and drink water drink the gatorade whatever the, whatever they're doing and all that liquid and and carbs are just sitting in their stomach but if you get out you know just walk around do five ten air squats five ten push-ups let the blood start to flow you know get the get those carbs and and that fluid out into the muscles into the extremities rather than all just sitting right in, right in your stomach so if you are d- doing any kind of weight cut or just after the two hour uh weigh in don't be sedentary you know move move around a little bit yeah so you know the squat warm-ups felt good i am you know i felt like they were moving well i was you know feeling like the food was not sitting where it's sitting where it needed to sit not <laughs> up in my throat um, but going into that first that first squat, I just it just came up so much rougher than I had anticipated. It especially came considering, than I anticipated yeah, especially too. considering my last my last um, warm up felt great. So, and then also kind of threw me off that I got a red from the head judge, and I'm like, what the, f-? you know? Yeah, the, the head judge was was given a lot of yeah. reds for depth in the in the squat, and that's yeah something I definitely think is mm. is true that the IPF judges tend to seem like they have a preference towards. A more upright squatting mm-hmm. style yeah. that you know you you bend more at the waist. Blaine who's a, had a ton of of problems uh, with with depth. A the way that Lane Norton squats that that, that head judge the head judge is not supposed to be judging judging depth. Yeah. I've I've yelled at them before for this, but I kept my yelling. At the, uh, well, well, you had to be because they threw you off to the side of, yes, the, that, of the platform. That's the other thing that also kind of sucked. So. Um, at the IPF meets, we have, like, the, you know, the world coach, which we, you went over in, like, your last podcast. So they still allowed Chad to be there. He had to just be wearing USAPL shirt and that they were going to let him go. It burned, burned my skin. Yeah. It did, <laughs> it did burn his skin. So that, I was actually worried they weren't going to have his size, but they did. I would have just worn a smaller size. I would have borrowed one from Jazz Hands. and <laughs> It would have been great. It would have been really great. tight. <laughs> a little midriff, maybe. Yeah, so... Um, you know, so of course they, they allowed him to be there, and they were going to let him come up because you're only allowed one coach when you go, you know, to the chalk bowl and in the back, in the back. But right before all of that happened, they come back and they're like, "Oh, you don't have sports shoes on because Chad's wearing his boat shoes." Yeah. So the the technical yeah. director, coordinator, or whatever comes in the back, right as we're starting to, you know, maybe Marissa had taken the bar for the squat warm up, and they start telling me like people are complaining about me being in the back, like coaches from other other countries, and. Uh, saying that they were going to remove me from the back because I was not wearing sports shoes. And I was, of course, wearing boat shoes, Sperry's. And 
my response to them was I said that these are sports shoes. This is for the sport of sailing. That's in the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike some other sports who wish they were in the Olympics, I was wearing the shoes of an Olympian. Uh, I don't know that they appreciated that response. These aren't course ball shoes. <laughs> <laughs> the... Uh, I don't know if they appreciated that response, but either way, they ended up letting me stay, thankfully. <laughs> yeah, but they let they let you stay, but kicked off to the side. So, so. you couldn't actually go out onto no. the into the little And it's nice coaches. to have, like, your pump-up, man. Like, hey, yeah. you got this. And, you know, Polly was cool because he was just, you know, kind of whatever. But it also sucks when, you know, he yeah. was just so taking my iPod from me. And, we're not you quite, know. It's not the same dynamic duo that you no. have here. It's true. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was... 10 feet further further away, but they didn't want me in the background of the live stream. They didn't want him to be in the live stream. Because they're like, well, we, they might see that he's not wearing sports shoes in this. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. I mean, they're yeah. just trying to throw me off my game. You know? I, I do definitely yeah. think that it was. And the coach who was out there complaining about this, I know who you are, just so you know. He's probably not watching, but... <laughs> that can be Google translated, too, if it's necessary, <laughs> for whatever language he speaks. Yeah, so you take the first squat, 303, 137 yeah. kilos. It came up a little rough. Yeah, so and we, then you and you told Polly what to put in for my next attempt because that's the other thing at, at World Meets, only the world head coach can go up and put in your attempts. But thankfully, like, um, we had talked to Susie and Matt and Polly ahead of time, and they're just like, you know, Chad can just tell Polly. Polly can go up to the table and put in the attempt. So I actually had no idea yeah. what was being done. Yeah, so we made a, a smaller jump there because – you know, coming into the meet, we know two, three, three big competitors for Marissa. Uh, Olga Golubeva had totaled 425 before Marissa's best. The world record is 430. Olga had done 425 at European Championships. Susie had done 424 at the Arnold Grand Prix, and then uh, Liz had done had done 424 at the at the Grand Prix. And Joy Nanami from England had done maybe 405 or something like that, but. Had, we'd seen training lifts that it was like, okay, she's competitive, and yeah. whenever you got a big deadlift, things can happen. And Liz, Liz is hu- huge squat, world record, you know, breaks the world record there at, at the meet. So we knew we were going to be down coming out of the squat, and we needed to get everything we could out of that. Um, and we needed to, get, you know, ideally to make three attempts, I, I thought was going to be what we really needed. So when the first came up a little slower, I decided, all right, let's make the conservative move five kilo jump up to 142 and a half rather than our normal plan would have been to go to 145 and then this well, always all happens the plan to me just starts going <laughs> off the rails i just decided to not go to depth so how happened. bad was it I didn't need to look at the lights. Oh, wow. Yeah. Jeez, wow. jerk. <laughs> well, I didn't. So, <laughs> just supposed to be like, it's great. What happened? What was going through your head? You know what? I have no idea, to be honest. I, I kind of go into, like, stupid mode, and I just I just got under the bar, and, like, I just, I think I was so worried about that head judge giving me, like, a red, I just decided to let her give me another one. Yeah. <laughs> I am really worried about I'm depth. Like, so the I'm last one was questionable. On this she one didn't won't give me be. the light for depth. What was it for then? Did you for ask? For forward lean. That's not against the rules. I, that's what I thought. The guy. Well, how do you, how is that against out, the rules? Paul, I don't know. When I walked out, Polly was like, "They don't like the forward. You're yeah, too yeah. forward, so then they can't see depth because you're too forward." Yeah, but they're not calling you for forward lean. They're okay, calling well, you for depth. Okay. Well, anyways, I don't know. I think I was just so worried about that. I don't know. I just decided to just have her give me another one. Like, just for fun. This will trick her. I'll swing even higher, and then she. You get know. three reds or two? Three. 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 Yeah. This is that bad. Yeah, so at, at that point, I, I get a little like, oh, shit, is this, we're doing this again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, but I tried to contain that. <laughs> <laughs> Every coach has been in that place. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what are we doing today? So we, we retake the one the 142. Yes. And a little pep talk in the back. Yes, you pep talked. A lot yeah. lower. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's pretty... like, you know, he's no, this is, always, this is Chad's pep talk. Um, you cannot afford to miss this. <laughs> That's a good pep talk. Yeah. You, you cannot afford to miss this. No yeah. doubt depth. You know the best coaching cue you'll ever get is three red lights. Because <laughs> right away you know you fucked up. 
The first red says do, the second red says it, and the third red, better. Do <laughs> it better. But, uh, yeah. Maybe we could make a light box like that. Yeah, do it yeah. better. Yeah. That's a good Chad's one. not the kind that's like, you got this, you can yeah. do it. No, he's well, like, he's like you need this to win. All those you need, posts you need to make this next one or it's all over <laughs> for all you. All those motivational lion picture you posted, believe in them now. <laughs> this is when we need it. I said something motivational probably. No, 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 you didn't. I probably said you can squat this weight to any depth, so... Squat it fucking deep. <laughs> <laughs> no, your first ones were like, you need to make this next Yes, one. but then after that was the motivation part. Yeah, after I made it. No. Okay. Before you made it. If you say so. Yeah. But anyway, so she made it on, on the third, and then we're watching everyone else make their third. Everyone else went three for three in the squat. Joy, three for three, PR. Yes. Olga, three for three, PR. Yeah. Liz, three for three, PR, new world record. And then right after that, Susie came up and broke the world record by a, a half a kilo. So coming out of the squats, 13 kilos behind Liz Craven, who is currently in first place. Mm -hmm. So you were in fifth, I think, Yeah. at that point. 13 kilos out of first. Uh, I yeah. guess 13 and a half kilos yeah. out of first. Is I mean, but we knew going into it that yeah. I was going to, yeah. even if I had my best squat day, like the plan to hit the 150 again, the 330 pounds, like I was going to be behind. Yeah. Just not by that much. Yeah, I was thinking six okay. kilos behind. Okay. Very manageable. Pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close. <laughs> it's, a, it's all six, relative. Six close is all relative. Yeah, yeah, that's, a, that's <laughs> yeah. pretty close. And yeah, so that was that was. I was trying to contain my nervousness. I don't know yeah. if I I did, but just shared about how we got to make all the benches. Well, yeah, we make your, them all. your nervousness is. Ner <laughs> I always know because you're like you you have to make all three of your benches. You have <laughs> like, okay. I got it. <laughs> but you did that. You benched. Yes. Uh, I mean, excellent, excellent benching. Uh, so eighty five. Opener, super fast. I mean, you could do that five, six reps. Yeah. 90 on the second, faster than the first maybe. And then on the on the third, 95 kilos for the PR 209. Okay. You had a little, some little hiccups with that. Yeah, I was, um, I unracked it and I hit the rack and I was like, oh, fuck. And then my foot kind of slipped out, so I had to like readjust my feet. And then, uh, you know, holding that much weight, it's like, yeah. I just needed to get it, I, I Ideally, it's like you just take it off and get the start command, but then I hit the thing and finally got settled, and I think, thankfully, it went up very fast. Oh, yeah, I got it was a very, very fast. Yeah, yeah. They, and Marissa does a self uh, handoff yeah. in the meets because USAPL. I've been doing a self handoff for years. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even I do a self handoff I think now. that just takes, like, a variable out of it because before we even started bench, the coaches came over and they're like, um, guy doesn't speak English, so you're going to have to basically mime how yeah. you want your bar taken. I'm He's like, oh. He's deaf. He'll need to do sign language. <laughs> He's deaf and doesn't speak American Sign Language. <laughs> so, the, uh, yeah, in IPF, you can't choose your own handoff person. No. Yeah. They, they just have one there. So it's it's potentially very bad handoffs could yeah. be given. And then when you're dealing with other countries and you know, the politics of, of IPF yeah. powerlifting, I'm not trying to have some Russian or Belarusian guy give a handoff when we're lifting against someone from that country. But smoked the 95, yeah. and we got a little bit of help from Olga, who missed her third, and Liz, who benched a little bit conservatively, but made all, all of hers. We kind of benched what, what we expected. So now at this point, coming out of the bench, Olga, who benched 100 kilos, has moved into first. You're 10 kilos behind her. Mm -hmm. And I think you may, and now just three kilos behind Liz. Yeah. So, like according to the live stream, they're like, the best Mattis I can hope for is third. Yeah, I, I wasn't watching <laughs> the, the live stream, but apparently, I guess they were, just, they were, they were yeah. a little hateful. Yeah, I guess they were thinking I was Who was just, doing the live stream? It was some Australian lady, so she probably was all about... Well, I mean, I think screen. looking at the numbers, they probably just, you know... I don't know. I think a lot of people are so big on individual lifts. Like, yes. oh, this person's a great world record squatter. Well, yeah. a squat doesn't win a meet. You yeah. have to be good at all three. So Yeah, I think that's yeah. a big thing is that everybody's focused so much on the single lifts. Yeah. And especially when someone starts out strong in the squat, they're mm -hmm. like, oh, well, this guy's going to be super strong. Yeah. But it's, it's like the people that are killing it in each one lift is, are generally not the people winning the whole thing. Exactly. You said all the time, big squat, and then everything else is small or, you know, huge bench press. But... And they're not squatting or you know pulling anything. So we get we get into the deadlift. Uh, we preferred for like a conservative deadlift opener. So actually, after opening deadlifts, I think Liz maybe opened ten kilos heavier than yeah. That. Mm -hmm. So now, now we're thirteen kilos behind Liz again, and then uh, 
but only like five or something behind Olga. And so we put in our, our plan, 182 and a half on the second, moved very smooth. And in this second round of deadlift, so we take a, a bigger jump. I think you were after <clears throat> your second to last probably yeah. mm-hmm. now. So we, we see Olga miss. Yeah. We see Liz miss. And now it's like the door, door is wide open. The door has been the door has been opened. So you're pulling to move into first mm-hmm. on the second. Yeah. Uh, with 402, something you've done in the gym, something you've done that or more now in, in two meets, three meets. Yep. Uh, so what's what's going through your head as as you go out there? Because you knew. Yeah. If if you pulled that one, you moved into first. Yeah, just fucking make it. <laughs> Don't let go of the bar because um, even on my first pull, it went up very fast, but it just felt like the bar. And I, th- I told you this when I came out. The bar feels slick. It almost felt oily on that right side, and um, I just wanted to hold on to it. So if you look at the video, I do end up getting one red light on the right side, and that's the the side that was. I felt like my grip was starting to. The bar was slipping out of my hand. And a, a so, lot of people were having... Yeah. You know, Olga, Olga dropped her second deadlift. Liz didn't drop it, but but you know may have been struggling with grip as well. We saw Brett Gibbs, Jezza. A lot of people had had grip issues. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, if it's weird chalk, if it's the travel and humidity... If yeah, the chalk was very, very fine grade. Um, after talking to Hanny, he said that it was the gymnastics chalk, which is meant to be more slippery so that they can do the tricks on the bar. But you didn't lose your grip. Third, I, I did. Oh, you did on your third. I lost yeah. a little bit on my second, too. Really? I, the bar on my second was right here. Yeah, on really, at, at the lockout. At the lockout. Out. It was coming out. So I, that's, it kind of worried me on my third attempt, go, you know, right, knowing right. that I hope I can hold on to that right side. And yeah. I don't typically have grip issues because I also train at a commercial gym that on a bar that has no knurling. Right, so, right. Yeah. Huh, that's odd. So second second deadlift, Marissa makes 182 and a half, 402, moves her into first. Join Anami, world record holder in the deadlift, goes after Marissa. Long battle with 191, misses it. So of the top four competitors, Marissa's the only one who made the second deadlift. So we're you know we're looking at the numbers here, and it's like not thinking that any of these girls, the way that they missed the second, could really move up and, and make the next mm-hmm. one. But I put in a high number to kind of wait and see what happened. And then dropped it down to 185, which I thought, you know, the 182 moved fast. Like, yeah. it moved just like yeah. it should have. Because our, our regular plan would have probably been to go to 190, maybe 192. And, you know, the, the grip just wasn't wasn't there on that yeah. one, which meant that we had about one one more minute of excruciating <laughs> suspense. Us, yeah. Like, when, when Joy went out, so after I missed my third... Um, and it, it came off the floor fast. Yeah. It, just, yeah. my, it came out of my hand and like, it couldn't just, it couldn't recover it. So Chad's like, well, Joy's going to go. If she pulls it, she wins. And I just went to the side and I was like yeah, plugging my ears because yeah. I just didn't want to hear like the yeah. cheers. Cause then, you know, if they're cheering, she freaking made it. <laughs> right. Right. But it's kind of shitty. Like you're friends with all these people and mainly you're just hoping they drop all their fucking deadlifts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a true competitor. <laughs> spoken like a true competitor. I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> But yeah, so then she she did miss it. She yeah. uh, and you won. Yes. So, so what, what's what's that feeling like? First world championship, first yeah. podium finish uh, in the total. You were fifth last year. Mm-hmm. Missed yeah. missed the deadlift that would have made third. The third, yeah. So from fifth in 2016 to first in 2017. You're standing on top of the podium. Yeah. How do you feel up there? I felt amazing. Like, honestly, like, yeah. I kind of almost got a little choked up even at one point just because, you know, they're playing the national anthem. Let's just face reality. It's as close you'll ever come to, like, Olympic-style, yep. you know, of, any, of anything. Guaranteed. Yes, guaranteed. <laughs> and so, you know, and to also come from behind when, like, people are kind of counting you out, like, you're not going to do yeah. this, you're not going to do that. And also, to just the, all the struggles that, you know, we've had to go through within the IPF and, you know, getting pushed out of worlds, you know, two years prior to that. So, you know, it just felt really good. Felt good. That's awesome. Yeah. I did suck to not hit the numbers that I wanted to hit, but a win is a win. So yeah, we got, you know, it was priority number one win. Yeah. Priority number two PRs, which, you know, which would for her mean a new world record total and maybe and goal number three would have, could have been highest Wilkes of all time. Yeah. So if you're only going to get one of those, yeah, like, yeah. you got to get the, the one yeah. that matters. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely a day, you know, it, it, it wasn't a day that was your best numbers no. or your best lifting, but it was your, definitely your best competing. Yeah. And that's, that's, what, uh, that's what counts because it's a competition. Yeah. It's not just about yeah. lifting the numbers, you know, some 
Yeah, I think people get kind of forget that. It's like it's a sport. I mean, it's there's a competition there that you have to win on that day and yeah. do your best. So, you know, I mean, because sure, how many people couldn't do the make couldn't do the lifts they needed to beat you, right? Yeah. So that always makes yeah. Like I said, it's when you're cheering for people to fail. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm down with that. <laughs> So as as I said, fifth at 2016 World. So mm-hmm. I think you totaled 395. Yeah. There. Right uh, under that 500 Wilkes. Yeah, it was a 499.9 yeah. Wilkes. Wow. But uh, so fifth at 2016 Worlds. The meet since then, where you told you told 395 there. The meet since then, you did 415 mm-hmm. at Nationals. Yep. 430 at the Arnold and 420 here. So we've had you know very big improvement all three lifts big prs what do you think some of the keys to this last year of improvement have been well good coaching <laughs> oh well oh. <laughs> i mean i didn't want to <laughs> say it myself <laughs> but <that> surprise <laughs> now do you think it's more of your coach's brains or his good looks that are the the main well, factor that's in? probably the good looks there yeah <laughs> that's what really motivates them yeah uh-huh <laughs> No, definitely like good coaching, and then it, the, we've changed a few things because I have had confidence issues in the squat, so taking like more singles. Um, you know, I think we work really well together, even though I got a little frustrated like in this training block, which I don't think you've seen before. Well, I had to get a little spicy, yeah, which you he, haven't seen he before. He yelled at me. This is the most mild of both of those things <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> I get a little frustrated. It was like, a, oh, shucks. <laughs> 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 yeah, but no, that and then um, I think not having injuries, you know, just yeah. making sure like stay healthy and that way you're able to constantly improve each lift. So as, as you Staying look- 25 for multiple <laughs> years in a row. Helps. Like Highlander. Yeah, I'm like Highlander. So as, as you look maybe at, at, you know, younger, younger lifters or competitors or what do you think that you do differently than a lot of other people? I do hypertrophy blocks. I notice a lot of really? like, yeah. They don't do them. Well, I notice a lot of people are always so do like heavy like. singles all the time when they're like ten nice. months from a competition, and I just don't understand why you'd put your body under that kind of stress all so, the time. So I don't you, train for four hours a day either. Yeah, I train like, you know, probably forty-five minutes to mm-hmm. an hour yeah. and a half yeah. at the longest. Yeah, I workouts. see some of these people Instagram posts like, oh, long day in the gym, four hours training. Like, who the fuck has it that was, kind of it was time? Like four hours to do powerlifting some training. Some people do. Because the they, they takes do like, like three. I know. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. And also just incorporating accessories that a lot of people don't do, making sure, like, I want to have more muscle. Muscle moves weight. Wow. So let's say that part again. Muscle, muscle moves, moves weight. weight. Yes. This, you know, from the coaching perspective and, and looking at other people, this is the best piece of advice younger female lifters need to take to heart. Is and this is why people, uh, girls come over from physique or come over from figure to a lesser degree bikini and are successful, you know, very quickly. Mm-hmm. Is that muscle moves the weight? Yeah. But so many people want to get overly specific. They want to get into, you know, squat four times a week, bench five times a week, deadlift three times a week. Oh. Very small variations, very high specificity yeah. all the time. Do all three five days a week. I yeah. just don't know that. Shoot me, please. <laughs> Same and, here. And they never take the time that you had from age 17 to, I mean, really past 35. Cause yeah. Because I've been coaching you for three years yeah. now. So from from 17 to 37. 20 a years. A very long hypertrophy block. Yeah, a 20-year <laughs> hypertrophy block. But line all the 52-kilo lifters up next to each other, and if you didn't know anything else about them, Everyone would should pick you to win because you have the most muscles. You have won the hypertroph the hypertrophy. Yes. So, young lifters, female lifters, every level of lifter, take a step back. Sixes, eights, tens, yes. an extended phase of that is going to be so beneficial to you. Mm. Make make a muscle. Show them your muscle. You can't see my muscles. I have a oh. can, see can you see it through my shirt? That's a good muscle. I should charge you for that. <laughs> People pay for flexing shows. I'm just throwing what, that out there. Should they email Marissa Flex <laughs> at gmail.com? Yes. Or? 
Teen muscle. Just send it. Just <laughs> make so make gross. PayPal. Make PayPal to Marissa Flex at, at so gmail.com. <laughs> That's surprising. I would not think that. I I guess I just assumed everybody was doing that because it makes a lot of sense to train that way. But no. I guess I was wrong. Common sense ain't so. I think that's why a lot of these younger max. lifters get injured too. And then yeah, like a week sure. before the meet, they decide to do like a max rep. PR and then <laughs> oh I've seen that the they do the reverse hypertrophy M-raps. like right before yes. meet yeah. do some volume pulls <laughs> so you gotta get a little bigger now six days out that left am wrap oh my good lord I can't end well yeah there, there's some unique decisions being made huh. by, by folks but yeah I, I think we have a whole video about that that's probably linked up here or up there one of those corners. Uh, where we kind of analyze, <laughs> where we analyze Marissa's <laughs> program a little bit more in depth and talk about some of those those keys. But that's, I think, really the, the biggest one. Yeah. It's going to contribute to longevity. It's going to, you know, contribute to to both short and long term success. Well, yeah, I mean, you can only be successful if you're able to still lift and not be injured. So, yeah. you know, throwing heavy weight on your back all of the time, some you know, body's going to wear down a little bit. Yeah, we're going to take a real quick break to get to know me a little bit better and we'll see you when you come back uh, i was actually adopted when i was born um so i sort of my whole life knew that knew that i was adopted i never remember a time of my parents telling me that i was and probably if they would have never told me i would have never known i would have just thought that i was way bigger than everyone else in my family but no real re- you know nothing beyond that would have made me think that maybe i was adopted but I just kind of, kind of always knew. They told me when I was little. I know I had a book that was called "Why Was I Adopted." So probably three, maybe four years ago. Now I did meet my biological mother, and uh, two full biological brothers. Uh, where my parents were just, you know, my birth parents were just young, you know. So they decided to put me up for adoption. Then they ended up getting married, having two sons of their own, and then getting divorced. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that uh, little get-to-know CWS minute there. Yeah, I referred to myself in the third person. What are you going to do about it? I've done it a couple <laughs> times today, talking about Spicy Wesley. Yeah, it's so spicy. <laughs> spicy Wesley is muy caliente. Um, so coming up. I speak French. <laughs> <laughs> coming up. Now we've, we've got the world, the world record. Mm-hmm. We've got the world championship. Mm-hmm. What is coming up next for you? We have um, nationals in October. Nationals. Let me just tell you right now, 52 kilo class, we're going buck wild on some of these attempts at nationals. (laughs) We're going to go yellow? Yellow attempts? Yes. I know that's your favorite word. I love it, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm excited for for nationals. Going to have the whole Chadley's Angels Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, we'll we'll all have, we'll have to pose for a photo. Uh Uh-huh. Chadley's Angels. Yeah. I now coach Max's wife, yeah. Joanne, in parallel. He's got two old ladies he coaches. <laughs> yeah. Chad is beside himself. You know, he likes old ladies. I can only ladies. imagine. <laughs> <laughs> All of the questions possible. Joe, Joe's... She's pretty inquisitive so far. <laughs> for someone who I know knows all the answers that she's asking <laughs> yes. questions for. She just uh, likes to double, she like likes to, to double check. They like to drown in your knowledge, yeah, as my yeah. daughter would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so na- nationals will be exciting. This could You'll be going for your third consecutive national title. Mm-hmm. So hopefully you know, we'll, we'll add, some, add some kilos to the American records there. Yes, sir. Uh, and then you also have a, a upcoming book. Yes, it's a book for women is called Fuerza, which means strength. That's so, spelled F-U-E-R-Z-A, wow. if you couldn't catch it through the accent there. And that's how it's Fuerza. said. Fuerza. Fuerza. You know, i got to be extra. Put a little roll on the R. <laughs> so, yeah, Fuerza, Female's Guide to Strength and Physique. So. Very nice. Yeah. And what kind of things are you talking about in this book? Uh, yeah, how to be strong and look good. Okay. <laughs> I think there's this like misconception that if you're if you're a strength athlete, you have to be look a certain way. I don't, and, I don't know what kind of people well, have been perpetuating that stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I think that's like the big fear. What a lot of times when, when people get into a certain sport, like you know, I they still want to maintain a certain look and look a certain way, but you can still do both and be strong. So this is going to cover some of your story, yes. your background through mm-hmm. these different sports, and cover how you train. Yep. So this is your main, your powerlifting training, your accessory work, some more physique-focused yep. work, cardio, 
nutrition. A little bit of calisthenics, body weight stuff oh. they do there, too. As well. Some of the tricks. Some of the tricks. Everyone likes to do tricks. Everyone does like to do Everyone like tricks. The party tricks get more Instagram likes. That's so. for sure. Once, once I, I basically get all just get the book about. so you can get more Instagram likes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Once I get my <laughs> set of clear stairs, I'm yes. going to do the coolest <laughs> of tricks ever. Can't wait. That's why we pay Shorty the big bucks yeah. for photoshopping those stairs just do out. Just green stairs. Green screen it. Yes. That's all you need. I we, could we'll do it on up. Mars. When we go to Mars for the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Our, our green screen has not been properly utilized yet. We'll, uh, we'll get to that. But, yeah, so the, the book, Fuerza, a female's... Fuerza. Fuerza. Thank you. Fuerza. You got to throw some flair on it, man. Uh, you don't tell Spicy Wesley how to throw <laughs> flair. Okay? Fuerza, a uh, female's guide to strength and physique. Mm-hmm. Hoping late July, early yeah. August. Uh, you should be able to find that at jtsstrength.com. And... Uh, yeah, that's what, yeah. any other thoughts for the people? Thoughts for the people. Um, stay away from Frankfurt Airport. Yeah. Take oh, your own I freaking was, water. They don't give, like... I was... He, we like, were so dehydrated there. I was so angry. Because <laughs> <laughs> we, we had a very early flight out of Minsk. We woke up at 3.30. This is on the way back. Yeah, well, this is on, the, on the way. Yeah. So wake up at 3.30, leave, leave the hotel at 4, have like a 40-minute ride to the to the airport, very thorough, you know, checking of the passports and stuff. It's mm-hmm. like, we're leaving. Just let <laughs> us leave. We don't want to be here anyways. Like, the best is the airport there, like, when they have, you know, when they have the picture of, like, what you cannot bring through the through security uh, line. Yeah, it's yeah. usually, like, a picture of just, you know, your water bottle. No, yeah. yeah. they actually had a, a glass case that had the gun. Oh, my God. The switchblade, the yeah, brass, brass knuckles. knuckles. What? Like, did they take these from people and then just decided to put them on display? That is yeah. awesome. Yeah. An actual display. It was an actual display. Well, I guess if you can't read or read pictures, you need an actual object. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, I was heated by the time yeah. we actually... Chad opened. was so angry. I was. I can only imagine. Yeah. The, the airport and... was enraging. <laughs> 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 I, I'm pretty mild, pretty mild mannered in general, but that airport, the Frankfurt Airport, like that, there were times when I could see the restaurants through the window, but we couldn't, we couldn't figure out how to get there. It was like one level down. That is from a where super we heavyweight hell. Like he was in uh-huh. purgatory at that moment. Yeah, like, I was. I was ready leave to it to the Germans. Yeah, that. I was ready to throw. <laughs> My like my suitcase <laughs> through the window, just so I would have a path to it. And I know that there's some fucking German engineer oh, out yeah. there, architect, wearing you know a black turtleneck, looking like that, <laughs> looking like uh, Mike Myers. Who's that Mike Myers character from SNL? Oh yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, with the monkey. Uh, yeah, I can't remember his name. Neither can I. Know I know you're talking about. But that someone who looks exactly like that guy, whoever, whatever his name is. Who's sitting there thinking he's so fucking smart designing this airport? <laughs> I don't think whoever designed that airport has never been to an airport. Yeah. It really like, did make LAX look like an oasis. Yes, that's and that's saying that's saying something because LAX lot. sucks. LAX yeah. is yeah. really bad. Yeah. The Frankfurt wow. Airport was very very frustrating. Wow. But uh, besides avoiding the Frankfurt Airport, mm-hmm. any other anything else? No, but we will have our seminars coming up. We do have seminars mm-hmm. coming up. All across the board, seminars coming up. Next up is Max. Uh, next weekend in North Carolina. Wow. All right. So when this come, this is going to come out, we'll probably put this out on Wednesday instead of Tuesday. Oh. I think well, it's going to come out on my birthday. Wow. The big yeah. three, the big three one. Are you sure you're three one and not four one? Well, There's a little. Yeah, if you're paying attention here, someone's forty one and <laughs> someone's thirty one. Oh. But I, but you know way too much about my. The 90s? I'm questioning if you're really 31. Yeah, but, you know, you know there, there's some theories out there of when I was adopted that my my adopted parents just, like, reset the clock. They They're like, no, oh, he's, he's 10 years old, but we'll just pretend that he's a newborn baby, as I was nearly the size of a 10-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so, so Max will be at CrossFit in Mecklenburg yep. on Saturday, uh, July 8th. Yep. So if last-minute tickets for that, shoot him an yep. email, max at jtsstrength.com. After that, uh, we will be, Max and I will be in Buffalo, New York for a super total clinic. Remind me to tell you a funny story about an email I got regarding that okay. the other day. 
Um, <laughs> super Tall Clinic at Mustache Fitness. You don't have to have a mustache to go to it. But you'll preferred. leave with one. Yeah. <laughs> That's the guarantee. The mustache guarantee. <laughs> yeah, please at least come, come prepared to shave yourself into a mustache. <laughs> Uh, that's August 26th and 27th. Uh, so that's going to cover powerlifting one day, weightlifting the other day. We'll talk about how to combine the two for the super total. Then after that, September 16th, Marissa and I will be at Warhorse Barbell in Philadelphia or just outside Philadelphia. The Sunday, the practical technique day is all sold out. But Saturday... Uh, Saturday evening, I'll be giving a lecture on program design. Uh, so, kind of all the theoretical and practical, the the theoretical ideas of w- why I design programs a certain way, and then see how it gets put into practical application to design programs for our beginner lifters all the way up to advanced IPF uh, world champion, strongest mm-hmm. tiny person in the world programs. And if anything, you just learn new big words. Yes. No. I, no. I have a I have words I like voluminous. Yeah. Um, That's a good one. What other <laughs> words? I don't That's know. been your newest one. Yeah. Well, I do enjoy saying voluminous. It just <laughs> rolls off the tongue. And uh, yeah, so that'll be September sixteenth. Warhorse Barbell just outside Philly, and then October twenty eighth and twenty ninth will be in Minneapolis at the Movement Minneapolis. But again, the Sunday clinic is already sold out. That's the, for the technique stuff. Wow. But same kind of situation there, Saturday afternoon, programming. So if you're in the Midwest, I don't know the next time we'll be in that area. It definitely won't be in 2017. It won't be until probably well into 2018. Yeah. Uh, so if you're in that Midwest area and you want to learn about program design, August 28th or October 28th, the Movement Minneapolis and it's we'll good to learn how to that. design your program. It doesn't do no good to learn technique if you don't know how to yeah, that's a great point. program your stuff. I, I think that, that <laughs> uh, you know, for, from our perspective as, as running the clinics, I think people put a lot of value on getting their technique coached in person, which, of course, is yeah. important and great. But uh, the technique for powerlifting is not overly complex. And there's a lot of ways that you can learn that and get pretty good at it. Yeah. Uh, but I do think that the, the program design is really what has set myself apart uh, as, as a lifter, you know, is what has helped Marissa turn. I started coaching Marissa right after 2014 Worlds. Yeah, and I was still training pretty much bodybuilding style. Yeah, so, and the, yeah. the numbers that she did at those Worlds – are, are now about her eight rep maxes, and that's coming from a lot from program design. You know, she weighs the same, maybe five pounds heavier. I thought it was because I was just fabulous. Oh, yeah. Max out every day. Right? Yeah, max, we max out every day. <laughs> I'm always maxed out. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I would highly, highly encourage you, if you are interested in learning how to yeah. design more effective programs, uh, to come check those out. You can find all that at store.jtsstrength.com. Beyond that, Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Always proud of the content we put out here. If you're interested in online coaching for powerlifting, weightlifting, or super total, we have multiple levels available through juggernautcoaching.com. You can email support at JTS Strength, or sorry, online coaching at JTS Strength, Max at JTS Strength to learn more about that. And this podcast was brought to you by Paella and Pull Ups. It's a lifestyle. If you like the podcast, give us a five-star review on iTunes. Write us a funny review. We love seeing those, and we'll see you next time.